This is Ed. Hello to all my patrons. I'm back again with another video here, this time on the Lost Labyrinth of Egypt. Is it real or is it not? And the Mataha Expedition of 2008, which seemed to have disappeared from the internet. Whatever happened to those details or the people involved it's pretty much unknown. I guess they're out there somewhere. They don't just seem to talk about any of what happened much. What am I talking about? Well, of course, I will go into this in a moment. Uh, I just want to thank all my patrons, of course, for supporting my channel and keeping it going. And I hope you enjoy this video. I will go into, of course, the comment section at the end of this video. Let's just really get into it. So, the Labyrinth of Egypt is something famous, at least within history, not so famous as in, you know, as recognizable as the pyramids, of course, because the pyramids are there and you can go visit them. The library, uh, the labyrinth itself of Egypt is something that one famous, I guess, ancient historian talked about. And which this expedition here, the Mataha expedition of 2008, went looking for. And they used ground penetrating radar, etc. And it is said they found the actual uh, surface of this massive labyrinth itself. That is, surrounding the pyramid underneath the sands is actually a massive stone floor which they found. Now they found this with ground penetrating radar. They weren't allowed to dig up the sand, of course. But meters underground, this massive structure stretched around the actual uh, pyramids themselves. Here we are over at Columbia College when they were talking about this. Although when you actually go over to the actual update on this, and we'll show you a few mysterious things, what happens? Well, you get an error, of course. I'm not saying that that's a conspiracy. It's just that the actual site is down. So let's get a rough overview of what has been said about this actual labyrinth itself. Of course, to do that, we have to go into some of the more esoteric sites like here, Ancient Code. And we'll have a look at a video as well. But there is a Steeman article before we go back to that. I just want to give you a visual representation of what's said to be buried underground. Again, I'm not saying this is real. Okay, I'm just saying it's something really interesting. And there seems to be some evidence that there could be perhaps some archaeological investigations further. Although you've got to remember Egypt is an incredibly corrupt country. I mean, the Minister of Antiquities was arrested on corruption although he got those charges overturned, and this of course, and then he got reinstated. It's a place where antiques go missing all the time, and the actual Egyptian minister himself gets paid $200,000 a year for just being on the salary of where? Well, the History Channel. You see, all these people have massive salaries, and they're all just controlled by strings that control a puppet. So you can't expect the truth really to come out. <laughs> now, some people might think that's outrageous me saying that. But that is my opinion. So there's a representation over what it's supposedly supposed to look like. The labyrinth itself is supposed to contain 3,000 rooms. These rooms contain pa paintings, papyrus, scrolls. That's are said to solve any of the ancient, ancient things of the past. And this really would explain the pyramids itself. Because a lot of people are wondering, what does the pyramid mean? Well, it's huge, and it's visible, and there's many mysteries around it. Especially mathematically. I'll go into those in another video, though. But one thing that you can glean from it is it's visual. I mean, you can see it. It's massive, and it's there. Well, what if it was a monument to mark the location of what some people say is also the Hall of Records? That is a term coined by Edgar Cayce, of course, if you're familiar with that. Now, that is supposed to contain many of the mysteries or things that uh, you know might answer a number of questions. Now, I'm not saying Edward Cayce 
is correct. I'm just saying that's really what he said. But what's interesting about this is the strangeness of it. Now let's go over to a Steemit article. Of course I'm logged here in and Steemit. Steemit was down because there were some problems with the blockchain. So I didn't post my new video on there. So here's what one researcher stated here, and this is the Egyptian Labyrinth by Re-Steemite, Re-Steema there, sorry. A few years ago, a team of researchers set out for Egypt to investigate a lost underground labyrinth. Now this is this crew here, okay, as referenced here on the College of Columbia.Education. Described by many classical authors, such as Herodotus, uh, the famous Greek philosopher and historian there, etc., and Strabo. I don't really know that much about that individual there. Data provided by the radar sweeps carried out by the uh, Mataha expedition there provided conclusive evidence of the existence of a mysterious, colossal underground labyrinth. Now, they were talking about this at the time. They were stating apparently that they had found some kind of structure, at least in, in regards to the radar data or the ground penetrating radar. And that was all the internet ever heard about it. And it kind of disappeared and evaporated. And now it's gone into the ether and nothing's actually happened. Now I'll tell you one thing. If there really is a hall of records there, the Egyptian government know about it. And whether they're going to open it up, well... That's another question entirely. I think they'll probably loot it and sell it off on the black market. Of course, they run into all kinds of legal problems in their own country if they actually announce it. So this site was explored uh, in 2008 by a Belgian-Egyptian expedition team. Although ground penetrating uh, techniques have been used by archaeologists for years, this expedition, uh, Mataha equals maize in Arabic apparently, was the first to apply this technology in the sand to investigate the lost maze, or at least look for it. And this Egyptian labyrinth, a colossal temple described by many classical authors, etc., we've named them already, could be key to providing the uh, existence, or at least the evidence, I guess, for the existence of a civilization that preceded other ancient cultures. Now, a lot of people state that the pyramids themselves, or at least the Great Pyramid, not the other two pyramids, but the Great Pyramid, is actually far older than people believe it is. Those other pyramids seem to have been built like an almost, um, you know, as, as trying to replicate what the Great Pyramid was. You know, the Egyptians seen it and they're trying to replicate this masterpiece of the past. Remember, the Great Pyramid used to be covered in, in, in different stones. It was all nice and smooth with apparently a golden capstone. It was covered in like a white marble or a white sandstone. And this would just make it look epic on the landscape, reflecting all the light. So it really was a magnificent uh, structure in the past. Really uh, quite, I mean, you can't, there's no way you wouldn't see that in a desert. So um, apparently this library is said to contain 3,000 rooms filled with uh, all kinds of things, as I stated, paintings, scrolls, etc., and has been lost for two millennia under the ancient sands of Egypt. Remember the Sphinx, the Sphinx itself was lost under the sands until they started digging it out and they found out it had pores on it. I mean, so much is lost under the sands. Among the authors who also, also mentioned the Egyptian labyrinth is important to mention Herodotus here who claimed to have seen it with his own eyes. So this is the famous scholar of the past. Of course, you've probably heard this name quite a lot. The Greek scholar there and he lived in the uh, 5th century there. So um, a contemporary of Socrates, etc., uh, he is often referred to as the father of history. This person is taught in uh, universities. Obviously, if you're studying classics, this person's a major entity, you know, major entity on the field of academia. It's referenced all the time. You see his quotes all around the internet. Well, they add validity to this because he stated 
this this uh, philosopher and you can check this uh, obviously this is just referenced on the internet you can look this up he stated in his own words that he seen it with his own eyes he seen the lost library so he stated i've seen an incredible play if someone were to put together the constructions of the greeks and show all their work together it would seem less an effort and exp expense compared to this labyrinth even the pyramids are surpassed by this great work and while i speak of the lower chambers from what i have heard from others i myself have seen the upper ones and they all surpass human endeavors so he was stating about something he seen with his own eyes now remember the legend of troy everyone laughed at people when they thought you know that people talked to troy because they thought it was a myth well until one uh person went looking okay he was wealthy enough to form his own expedition went looking for troy and found it exactly uh at the location he pretty much fo followed troy from you know the Iliad the directions etc described by Homer and he found Troy now it's widely accepted that is the lost city of Troy people laugh at ancient uh, references to things until they turn up okay there's been temples lost in the forest people have talked about how they don't exist and then they turn up and then the scholars say well we were wrong but it takes them decades to admit that. Well, they've talked about the lost library of Egypt. That is uh, something which was massive in scale. And according to Herodotus here, something that oppressed him to such an extent. He's saying that no artwork of the Greeks can even compare. Nothing can compare to it. It is literally amazing. It's filled with flaws upon flaws over 3,000 rooms themselves very interesting so uh, Herodotus was referring to a two-story maze one with gigantic stone roofs and the other with underground roofs attempts have been made to represent the labyrinth as it exists in the author's time among them are the designs made by an Italian archaeologist and a visual reconstruction by this individual, a German uh, Egyptian, uh, Egyptian Egyptologist, sorry, an academic during the Martha exp uh, expedition here, Martha High expedition. Radar results were shown, which indicate the underground presence of a various grid-shaped cavities under the, sa under the sands there surrounding the pyramids. In the report of the results of the expedition, the following was written. Now, uh, before I read this, I have to add a caveat. <clears throat> I have not been able to find the actual piece that this is written from. So if I had a piece of paper, I could write down that Herodotus mentioned this labyrinth and talked about having seen it. Serious scholar, widely accepted as someone of the utmost important and quote unquote the father of history I can reference the fact that it was treated seriously enough by the universities it actually happened it was formed but I can't find the actual information where this is cited directly from this is why when you do articles you always have to include the citations and I don't believe there's any citations below so you have to take this of course with a grain of salt but apparently the following was written here. Underneath the artificial stone surface, despite the slightly distorted effect of the presence of groundwater, excuse me, at a depth of between 8 and 12 meters, there is a gigantic grid-shaped structure made of high-strength material such as granite. We are talking about the presence of a colossus, a colossal archaeolog archaeological structure under this uh, here. So this is the site itself, uh, which is considered as the roof of this labyrinth itself. So you would have to picture the sands up a bit higher and covering this structure itself. And according to this, uh, at a depth of 8 to 12 meters. That is pretty deep, okay? 
So how many feet are in a meter? Well, there's a few. For instance, if you were two, if you were two meters tall, you'd probably be about six foot four in feet. So you can do the calculations from there. So you're literally do, dealing with, uh, you know, a great depth. Uh, in fact, I'll do the calculations now. So if we're taking the upper echelons here, 12 meters is the equivalent of about 39 feet. So there you, there you go. So about 39 feet uh, down there. So quite deep underground. I mean, that is a, quite a height actually. So you would need serious digging equipment in order to go after that. Of course, the Egyptian government is not like, going to let you do that. Even if the structure was there, they probably found another way to get there. Uh, maybe entering through the pyramid itself. Remember, the Great Library of Alexandria was burnt to the ground. Okay, it was burnt and everything was destroyed. Some people say it was, you know, some people say it was, you know, um, you know, fundamentalists, Islam, etc. Some people say it was Julius Caesar. Although it would be hard for me to believe that Julius Caesar, someone that is somewhat a scholar and a writer, etc., even though he was a draconian warlord and uh, really uh, created a coup in order to take over Rome, which of course is a dystopia anyway, which was a, the, defined the actual term imperialism. Um, you know... <laughs> well, Rome, you know, Julius Caesar subverted democracy in order to become an emperor. The main point is, is that he still was a learned man, so to speak. He knew about, he liked art, you know, so it would be unusual for him to burn down the Library of Alexandria, but that is one actual theory as to what happened to the library itself. Perhaps he did do it, I don't know. But isn't that an interesting thing? Now, we know that the Egyptian government, in my opinion, is absolutely corrupt, as most governments are. Would they hide something if they found it like that? In my opinion, they would, absolutely, depending on what age they found it in. Now, 12 meters or 39 feet is extremely deep. So, in the past, they were probably unlikely to have found it unless there was a passageway through the pyramids itself, but I have no doubt in the past or at some time they've come across some entrance way, etc. If you have an underground library like that and you go to that much trouble, then you must have an entrance way. Maybe it's still uh, has not been found or maybe it has been found and everything is like um, in a museum somewhere as uh, what did he know? Indiana Jones used to say, it should be in a museum somewhere. Well, I do believe in that theoretically, but let's face it, everything that's unusual placed in a museum is literally put in the basement. Sometimes, not all times, but let's have a look, go back to Ancient Code here, and I'll show you a video. This is a place called Polygram, a uh, computer graphics company that seemed to be working with the expedition at the time. I'll just play a little bit of this video here. I'll slow it down a little bit just because of copyright. I'm getting a lot of copyright claims at the moment. So let's try it here. Let's see if we can play it at like about a fifth of scale <laughs> and with it slowed down. So you're getting, I'm playing off the speaker being recorded by the microphone because uh, if I play it clean and it picks it up clean then I have copyright claim program uh, problems though. Hawara situated also just note I'll rewind it for reference people saying that my it doesn't play loud enough well now it should play loud enough because it's coming through the speakers which I can turn up so Hawara situated 90 kilometers south of Cairo and location of the legendary labyrinth of Egypt in the Renaissance period some attempts were made to make a graphic reconstruction of the colossal structure based on the writings of Herodotus and Strabo, who visited the labyrinth in the Roman period. Two levels, twelve palaces, and no less than three thousand chambers. In 1888, 
Archaeologist Flinders Petrie discovered a stone plate at the foot of the pyramid, measuring 304 by 244 meters and covered under 5 meters of sand. He made the generally accepted assumption that this was the foundation of the disappeared labyrinth. The young Belgian artist Louis de Cordier doubted this theory and in the beginning of 2008 he financed and led the Matahar exhibition. His thesis proved to be reality. A professional team of geophysicists discovered a vast grid of walls underneath the stone plate. This alleged foundation might very well be the roof of the still existing labyrinth. The large amount of underground scanning data is analyzed by the geophysicists. Just want to point out something before we go on here and that is the fact that I can't find any of like this is all this is from 2008 so they're getting these pictures of scans from somewhere. They're trying to probably create a little buzz about it. Okay, but I cannot find any of the academic papers anymore. They've all been erased from the internet. I can't find any information. There's no Wired article. There's nothing. Maybe you might be able to turn up something. Most of everything I find, of course, is on you know, places like Ancient Code or more esoteric websites, you know. But isn't that strange? It's evaporated from the internet. ...of the National Research Institute of Astronomy and Geophysics. Soon, Polygon Graphics will present a three-dimensional visualization based on the geophysic results, which will bring us a step closer to the truth about the labyrinth of Egypt. So um, this is uh, pretty much what it is, right? So these, I guess, are the people involved in it. You probably see some um, names there. This was in combination with the Egyptian government, antiquities, etc., uh, and the university itself. The problem is, where is the information now? The information seems to have disappeared from the internet. Obviously, if you're going to survey the ground, if you're going to bring in geophysicists and you've got all their names, professors and doctors and stuff like that in order to seriously investigate this, you've got your, ra you've got your radar data, your deep scans, all those kinds of stuff, then where is the paper? It may be out there. The links might be dead because I tell you what, what did they say? They said we're going to make the video. Let's take a look. Did they make a video? No, they never made a video. Okay, here is the labyrinth of Egypt nine years ago. Their next one was seven years ago, two years after that. No videos about the labyrinth of Egypt. Go right through their channels. There's none there. There is indeed nothing. Okay, okay, they're doing stuff. They're doing good stuff, interiors, and they're probably doing their CGI and stuff. But they abandoned it. So it's not there anymore. Just very unusual. So of course this combines with, as I said, the Hall of Records as we just scroll out here. And of course um, that is something pretty famous in regards to being under the left paw of the Sphinx. Which of course lines up with Graham Hancock, um, Peter Strzok. Sorry, <laughs> Peter Strzok. I'm living in uh, political land at the moment. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know who I mean. I can't remember his name. The guy that erosion on the pyramids. Um, uh, his name escapes me right now. But you know what I mean. All of those kinds of individuals talking about the radar scans themselves. Here is uh, John Anthony West talking about some of the Hall of Records underneath the Sphinx. Now, that's where they believe the hall, there's enough, maybe a Hall of Records buried under there. Maybe whatever. But he states that there are cavities here. What well, my point is, is there's mysteries that serious people uh, state are there, but uh, we don't get any information. Now we know the way that things are hidden, 
that uh, especially if the information in it showed that our history was not as we are told. Now if it was a mummy in there, uh, whatever, and some things, and gold or whatever, uh, then maybe they might get out if the wizard wasn't taken for themselves and, you know, sold off. Because you've got to remember, this individual, okay, was arrested for corruption. Now he's been reinstalled now, but he was arrested for corruption. If you Google that, you'll see numerous articles. I'll show you those in a minute, actually. But let's listen to John Anthony West here, of course, the famous individual course from that old documentary you probably are aware of it with um, sorry with Charlton Heston in it with the scarf tied around his neck ever since Soylent Green uh, Charlton Heston always had a scarf tied around his neck so he could take it off and wipe the sweat off his brow and then retie it on in dramatic fashion I guess that might be a dramatic device he uses nonetheless was an excellent documentary from the 90s early 90s there well listen sadly Sadly, John Anthony West, of course, has passed away in this uh, video with Joe Rogan. He was uh, very ill, but nonetheless, he still had that uh, seed of wanting to find the truth inside him and talk about it. So let's listen to a bit of this here. There's the A. That's, that's the, that's the, that is a cavern or a chamber or of some sort. It's a void underneath the bedrock. Mm. And that's the so-called Hall of Records. People think that it, that's Edgar Casey is talking about. We're iffy about it, other than that, the seismograph does not know how to channel. So it just says what's there. And so it knows there. there's a void. It knows there's a void, and at the very back, it's a little bit, you can see it's the edge of the sea. See, at the very end, by the rump, mm -hmm. that is also a chamber, and that's absolutely, it's known that it's there, and this gives you the same profile seismologically. But there's no seismograph way to get into these things? Yeah, the back one, there's a way, it's a very rough cut chamber. And there's a, just behind there, one of those stones, if you pull it away, and you can get in, and it's a room, uh, rough, very rough, but about the size of the room that we're in here, the studio, and that's a room. So if that's a room, then it stands to reason, that's seismographical reason anyway, that A is also a, a cavern or a grotto or a construction or something. So what we're looking at with A, when you see all those circles around it and the, the, the rough shape of it, that's the shape that they believe the room is, so it would be similar to the one that's at the rump, where it would be like kind of a sort rough of, room. Well, well the, the seismographic, those are the, I forget, topo lines or something that give you the depth mm -hmm. of the thing of that. And but it's not like a square, 90 degree angle. Well, uh, it, it, it's roughly rectangular. Hmm. says Tom, Tom Lebecki, who was our geo, geophysicist who was doing that work. So what's the whole so there you pretty much have it. Of course, there's John Anthony West there. Let's just get the article from this individual here. Now, I'm not saying that this individual did these crimes. Maybe it was saying to do with the political environment at the time. But I'm just saying that there is a long list of very untrustworthy people in these roles. Is this person untrustworthy? I don't know. Well, let's go have a look at it up. So here's another classic, uh, Egypt's Indiana Jones, uh, questioned over pyramid theft, allegedly helping Ger these Germans, three Germans, steal numerous artifacts. Here's another one, former Egyptian antiquities minister faces charges over theft from pyramid. Here's another one, uh, Anti antiquities chief fired, he's now been rehired after the change of the government, okay, etc, etc, etc. In fact, if you um, go back to his thing here, it actually says this here um, in his bio, although it li lightly uh, addresses it as being part of the Egyptian protests, of course. Who really knows, is it? Um, but uh, he was receiving uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars also from the History Channel as, of course, an advisor to exclusive content from the History Channel as well. And I'm not saying that uh, you know they have an interest in paying them obviously if they want to do stuff on literally uh, Egypt right they want access to them so I'm not saying there's some kind of conspiracy but I'm just saying that there's an interest value there there's there's a there's lines of people paying him other than his salary and that means where does his loyalties lie history channel itself has some good stuff but um, who really knows? Of course, they are ancient aliens these days, and uh, I'm not saying it's aliens. 
Uh, but I just thought it was a little interesting mystery as, re as in regards to this expedition and what happened to it. Now, if the results show that there was nothing there and they that's all fine and dandy, okay, it's online. I can check the... I can check the uh, study and it says conclusion or how it could be anything it's probably just like geological formations and then we'd look at it and go okay well there wasn't the evidence there all we want is what's real but here is the suspicious thing all the information's gone you can't even see the document that says there was nothing there if there was nothing there although apparently people claim that the document stated that there was something there it's just very odd, but of course, living in a mirror world, nothing is that odd to me anymore. <laughs> nothing at all. It's just really going by the numbers. Let's jump over to Patreon and answer some of these questions. Okay, so we're back. So let's read some of these out. I'll just read this here. This is by George Stanton there, named after the famous designer of the Stanton chess pieces, apparently. I don't know. Hi, Ed. This is not the only observatory that was shut down. There were six others in reference to the solar observatory and sunspot that have been missing six plus hours of video after the 23 hour mark. Very interesting. Access 232D network drone camera located in Sydney, Australia. These web uh, is naming the actual sites there, as you can see them. Hope, let me blow it up a bit. I don't think people will be able to read that. Okay, here we are. You should be able to read those there. List of the uh, telescopes, etc. themselves. Um, webcams there in Pennsylvania and Hawaii. I mentioned the one in Hawaii. I think I think I caught a, bunch, a couple of these. I think there is uh, more to this that that's just space. I'm of the opinion that these observatories were used in some kind of sophisticated communication system. Perhaps black hats and the cabal were seeking a clean channel of way of communicating their next moves. Well, could be. I don't disregard anything at all. Anything's possible. Uh, as Mark Twain said, as I read the other day, um, you know, the truth is stranger than fiction because fiction has to make sense. It's true. There's a video, a video on Mr. BB333 back in the days, of course, the famous uh, channel there. Uh, I've actually watched this uh, video because I was reading the questions before I made this video, but everyone else can see it. I'm very careful also about playing videos these days, but I had to play those other videos for reference. That explains the double eclipse from the SRO satellite that orbits a different path. There's a common thread here. What we, what do all of these have in common is the key to the answer. And I just found this. Okay, so Google Maps appears to be blurring something at the Sunspot Observatory. The more you dig, the more mysterious it becomes. Um, so I didn't open up Google Earth and check that. Um, so let's, let's see if Google Earth loads first because I've had problems. I'll try it now. Okay, so I've got it operating here. Let me just come back and set up Google Earth as well. Okay, here's we are on Google Earth Pro. And we're going down to the exact location mentioned, which was the Sunspot Observatory. I think they're uh, maybe dealing with something kind of newer. Uh, and you, I'm not sure which year they're referring to, but um, if you're referring to the new photos, because of course you're looking at a photo from 2013 here. If you go to the new photos, um, then it will be blurred out with the actual uh, clouds. Although I don't know. If you get a screen cap, let me know. We'll share it with others. or we'll post it there on Patreon so we can tell exactly what you're looking at. I'll just head back to the Patreon questions. So here we are back and I just found this. Google Maps. The more you dig, the more mysterious it is. It is indeed. I think this is ramping up to be a pretty interesting mystery. Of course, I've been through now. I've been through a few mysteries now, right? Like I'm in some kind of weird detective novel or something, you know, um, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, call to check. And what's his name? The night, whatever. The files from the '97 strange detective show. George Stanton there. Thank you for that, George. That is really some good uh, comments there. That's for sure. Be here. I was checking out the observatory on Google Earth today as I was intrigued by the situation. 
excuse me, it also is quite close to Roswell, sort of. Maybe they preemptively shut it down and the other outages are a distraction. I'm watching Leaked Project today and apparently just wanted you to hear you say apparently in your New Zealand accent, apparently, <laughs> someone found a copy of the X-Files game in the 1997 rubbish bin. They did. They found a copy of the 1997 X-File DVD. Well, I think it was a game actually, uh, a CD called Unrestricted Access. That game, basically when you go into the game, it's really just a bunch of X-Files uh, lore in it, so to speak, of different episodes and things like that. That was from a video where the person walked in the vicinities and was looking through the windows and things like that. So um, it was in there. And my opinion about that is if the FBI is raiding a place and they know people are going to walk around, they throw something in the, in the uh, bin there to get it into the news cycle in order to work as a subversion tactic and link it to conspiracies. Uh, or it could be saying house entirely, I don't know, but I don't trust planted things like that where they're just half in the bin and it kind of looks like <laughs> you can see it through the window. You know, it's awfully convenient for the news crews. Next thing they got, but they didn't really pick up on the story, but Zero Hedge talked about it a bit. Where the FBI agents that cleared the place, I still have more questions than answers. Just wondering. Does the sun always have a crater looking anomaly visible? Yes, it does. Well, not all the time, but a lot of the time, yeah. It has that kind of strange anomaly where it looks like half of it's missing. That's normal, okay? That's normal in the sun. Uh, you will see, I don't know, every video, you know, it's all, it's all the time you see it, and I've looked at it a lot. Now, do you see one as big as that? Not often, but that's a reference to a possible solar storm, which you'll see some auroras, depending on what part of the world you're in. Of course, uh, the sun's old. It's billions of years old, and, um, you know, um, it'll still be there tomorrow. The chances are that we're living in a time where the sun turns off, or something happens. I just want to distill people's feels. Is ast mathematically astronomical. Now, the magnetic sphere itself, yes, it is weakening, okay, but that is a bit concerning to me, okay, a little bit, but um, who knows, okay, what will happen when that happens. Um, we're talking about a magnetic pole shift or something you're talking about could happen in a few hundred years. I doubt it'll happen in my lifetime. My life doesn't get that exciting. But thank you, Beck. I guess it is a bit weird, though, isn't it? Hey, Beck, by the way, let me know if you can't put comments. You said you had problems, I believe, in the, it was in the comment section today of the YouTube. You had problems in posting in the comment section. Do let me know on Patreon uh, if you have any other problems. At the end of the day, if people are going to have problems with it, I'll just delete the site and put a forum up there, you know, and then it'll solve the problem entirely. But... Um, Something's going on. I don't know what's going on, on the site, but there's something, you know, might have to reinstall everything or something. I might have to do, I don't know. Uh, Beck also here also thought it was interesting that the outage was sa the same time as the development of the hurricane. I did as well. I thought that was unusual as well. Um, there was an unusual connection there going on with the hurricane. <sighs> I saw the strange weather anomaly on In Truth by Grace's YouTube channel in the early hours of this morning, and that is not a natural weather event. I have been studying weather since a child. Apparently, I had a crush on a weatherman when I was two. I had a book about clouds with the, their proper names when I was about five, and I studied weather, specifically taking on an extra unit to study weather and geology in high school. Okay, so you're really into weather there. Um, yeah, well, I grew up on a farm during a drought, and I was better at predicting rain or not than most weather reports by looking at the sky. Then geoengineering, well, you should be, because I tell you what, those people that predict the weather on TV... They're not as good as the old farmers, you know. Um, I trust the farmers' innate uh, you know, instincts, you know, about whatever it's going to rain or someone that grew up on a farm more than I do a weather man. Um, well, sometimes they get it right, okay. Yes, they can predict hurricanes, I guess, and stuff. So, I don't know. 
I have about six weather apps on my phone. Okay, and frequently check out the radar when storms are approaching. I can read ISO bar charts to predict wind, speed, and direction. I also live in the far northern Australia, far northern Australia, where there are frequently cyclones. And I watch the approach and landfall of several of these in my time up here. Those blue patterns are not natural. Something is very wrong with the weather pattern. I'm going to have to check out that Truth by Grace uh, YouTube channel. I did skim the comments before I read this video, so I did read, read the gist of the comments, but I didn't go to that channel. I just watched a few things where there are links. Thanks for that. I'm going to Google that and have a look at that weather anomaly or just to sub and keep track of it. Well, that's really interesting because this hurricane... Now, I could tell you a conspiracy that's going to be a crazy conspiracy. That is, what are those states that the hurricanes hit? And they hit just before you have, you know, the next kind of elections in the United States. Those are, those are Trump's states that the cyclone hit. Okay, so it's going to be Trump's voters that are going to be affected. Now, you might think that's outlandish, okay? A hurricane who controls the weather? Well, I believe in weather modification. Plus, I don't mean to go all crazy in a Patreon video, but you've got to remember the kinds of individuals that are flying airliners into buildings. You know, those kinds of people. They're the people that would do anything. They have to throw all the cards on the table. They might even raid an observatory to distract from something or do something. Who knows? But thank you for Beck. You, uh, thanks, Beck. Uh, you really made me think with that one. Excellent comment. Brent here. Mr. BBB YouTube channel claims to explain the double eclipse in his video on September the 11th. Sounds reasonable, but you decide. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he's a good, that's a good YouTube channel. Uh, I've been following his work uh, in the past, and he definitely would know m much more about eclipses than me. He's really into the sky phenomenon and stuff like that. So if he has a reasonable explanation, I'd accept that. Uh, thank you, Brent. Uh, Dogs Bollocks here. Ed, this is weird. I'll just open this up. Let me have a look. So we're just over at Mr. BB's channel here. You can see um, there was some kind of strange anomaly in the sky. And um, let's just have a look at here. There's a couple of videos on the side by uh, Secure Team. Secure Team's covered the observatory as well. The strange sky phenomenon. Let's just have a little listen here. Point of light. I'm going to play the video for you now. And I've got it set up right here. And I've got it looped. It's the same video about five different times. I won't play all of this because um, I don't want, you know, it's not my content. So I'll just get to the main clip here and we'll play this. And the sky was pulsating. Look at that. That's weird. Look at that. It's in a community called Lima. Huh. When's this from? Two th this is 14, 2014. Uh, sorry. September the 14th. I'll have to check that out more. That's quite intriguing. Of course, need to do more research into that. Um, seems Mr. BB is right. Really, well, he's always been on top of the top of it. I remember when he didn't have many subscribers at all back in the days, back in the esoteric detective days. The video is also the solar eclipse here by uh, George Stanton as well. I have to have another look at. Uh, that one as well. I have seen that one. Um, but that is really um, interesting. Thank you, Dogs Bollocks. That was a very good one. Um, I have to look into that. It seems like some weird, really weird stuff is happening. You know, and you wonder, well, what's happening? The shutdown on Observatory, that was extremely mysterious. We've got strange weather phenomenon now. Um, huh. I have to have a look at that. Um, of course, that flashing in the clouds. It could be some kind of lightning. Okay. Maybe, but it doesn't. I don't know. Because you can't. I mean, you'd have to look at it and, and measure that. What you have to do is lightning doesn't light up the sky for that long, and you have to measure it against it. Whether it's is it daylight? Is it showing daylight in the? Is it showing darkness in the photo with flashes of light? Could be lightning. It depends. 
Uh, Tina J, thank you, Ed. Well, thank you, Tina. Thanks a lot. Hey, lovely uh, picture there. It looks like a field of... Looks like a field of like can't tell by the avatar it's a bit too small but roses or or poppies or something i see some daisies there as well here we are katie thanks for not terrifying me no problem katie <laughs> and this is julia hi ed i hope you had a nice day off i on the other hand am going through withdrawal no new videos i became a patron last week but i have been listening to you you're out of light rabbit hole videos i love the objectivity and humor well, thank you, new patron. Thank you, Julia, for joining uh, up on Patreon and appreciate you being over here. I hope you find these videos entertaining. I do try to buy it, bring something of merit or something I'd find interesting anyway, hoping you'd find it interesting here. So I hope you enjoy them. Usually they're not as long as this because we have like a, usually a, a topic which is just um, you know, about 20, 25 minutes or something. Sometimes I relax to do a top 10 list. Um, some people like those, I don't know. Uh, but thank you everyone for uh, those great comments. And it's always interesting to see what people have to say. So much different intel here. So I was disappointed when my website was not recording, was not not letting people post in the comment section. Because, you know, it, it, that's why I need a forum. Okay, if I had a forum, it would be easy. I... I I don't know. We'll see. I mean, you probably run into problems posting there as well. I don't know what's going on. Um, I did test it under different browsers. It seemed to be posting all right. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. See if I get any comments. We'll see what people say in regards to being able to post or not. Otherwise, we'll clear it up. I'll just format it and put a forum up or something. <laughs> in the meantime, uh, thank you all for your uh, amazing support. And stay safe. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you all later.